Hi, I'm Dr. Adrienne Sprouse for your Environmental Minute. Today we're on location in Phoenix, Arizona at the conference of the American Academy of Environmental Medicine. And today we have with us Jeffrey Smith who's going to be talking to us about genetically modified organisms. Hi Jeffrey, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Jeffrey, what are genetically modified organisms? GMO, genetically modified organisms. They take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. The most popular varieties are those that drink herbicide and not die. So Roundup Ready soybeans and corn can be sprayed with Roundup herbicide. Liberty Link corn can be sprayed with Liberty Link, with Liberty, with Liberty herbicide. So these crops make weeding easier for farmers. There's other crops like corn and cotton that produce their own toxic insecticide that breaks open the stomach of insects to kill them. Now when these were introduced, the FDA scientists were very concerned. They said the process of genetic engineering could create allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems, and urged their superiors to require long-term study. But the person in charge of policy, Michael Taylor, was the former attorney to biotech giant Monsanto, and said no testing is necessary, no labeling is necessary, because we don't see any difference between GMOs and non-GMOs. Well, now the scientists at the FDA have been vindicated. In 2009, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine reviewed the animal feeding studies on GMOs and said these animals are suffering from gastrointestinal problems, immune problems, reproductive disorders, organ damage, accelerated aging, and dysfunctional regulation of cholesterol and insulin. They urged all physicians to prescribe non-GMO diets to every patient. Now there are thousands of physicians doing just that. And when people are taken off of a GMO diet, they report improvements on the same categories of diseases and disorders that the American Academy identified in the lab animals. When farmers and veterinarians take livestock off of GM soy or corn and substitute non-GM soy or corn, the animals get better from the same problems. When you look at the charts that, are, that, that show the growth of GMOs or the use of Roundup, plotted against diseases growing in the United States, there's an unbelievable correlation between inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel, chronic constipation, uh, cancer of the liver, kidney, thyroid, um, death from senile dementia, death from Parkinson's, high blood pressure, obesity, a whole host of diseases. When you look at the nature of Roundup itself, which is now sprayed on Roundup Ready crops and consumed in high volume, if you look at the journal Entropy from 2012, there's a study that shows that the properties of Roundup link it to heart disease, obesity, diabetes, cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, autism, anorexia, multiple sclerosis, aggression, and depression. Basically, as they say, the problems associated with a Western diet. When you look at the properties of Roundup, it kills the beneficial gut bacteria. People spend a fortune to take lactobacillus and other probiotics that can just be killed by the food that they're eating because of this antibiotic that's on the food called Roundup. What are the five companies that are producing genetically modified organisms? Monsanto, Syngenta, Bayer, Dow, and DuPont. Now that there have been so many health reports about genetically modified foods, what is Monsanto doing about this? A former scientist from Monsanto told me that his colleagues found that rats were damaged when they consumed Monsanto's corn. Instead of withdrawing the corn, he said they rewrote the study to hide the effects. This was not surprising to me because in my second book, Genetic Roulette, we show clearly how they rigged the research to avoid finding problems. They used tobacco science. They've got bad science down to a science. When independent scientists discover problems, they're typically attacked often gagged, sometimes fired. And tragically, there's very few studies, independent studies, done on GMOs. But nonetheless, these still show gastrointestinal problems, immune problems, etc. So companies have been doing a pretty good job about hiding this information from the public. What can the public do in order to be better informed? There are states now that are taking up the slack where the FDA failed us. Um, 
Connecticut and Maine passed labeling laws that have a trigger clause. They require at least four states to pass similar laws in New England. Washington state has a ballot initiative that's going on right now. California's ballot initiative failed after more than a million dollars a day was spent by the biotech industry and food companies disinforming the voters falsely claiming that labeling would increase prices and would confuse people, and it was just an effort to confuse people on their part. We make it easier for people to avoid GMOs with the Non-GMO Shopping Guide at nongmoshoppingguide.com. Also an iPhone application, totally free, Shop No GMO. There's more than 10,000 products that are third-party verified as non-GMO. So if they're not in the guide, they may also say non-GMO on the label, or they may actually say organic, which means they're not allowed to use GMOs intentionally. And if it doesn't say organic, and it doesn't say non-GMO, and it's not listed in the guide, then you have to look at the ingredient label and see if it contains any of the at-risk ingredients. There are nine genetically modified food crops. Soy, corn, cotton used for cottonseed oil, canola, sugar from sugar beets, papaya from Hawaii or China, zucchini, yellow squash, and alfalfa that's used for hay. However, animals also eat genetically modified feed, and that can affect their, their health, which can affect our health if we eat the animals or their dairy products. Our Institute for Responsible Technology has been working hard to educate people about the dangers of GMOs and how to avoid them. Our most effective educational tool so far is the movie Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives, which won Movie of the Year and Transformational Film of the Year in 2012. We also have uh, books and DVDs and CDs, a free newsletter, a speaker training course. We've taught over a thousand people to speak on GMOs, as well as an advocate's tipping point network with more than 10,000 people organized in more than 100 groups. So I recommend that people go to responsibletechnology.org, look around, find information, definitely sign up for the newsletter to keep informed, and figure out if you'd like to be trained as a speaker, connect with others, or simply be a click and send revolutionary by signing petitions, etc. that we'll send you. You've given us some amazing information about GMOs. Thank you, Jeffrey, for being a part of this program. Thank you. I'm Dr. Adrienne Sprouse, and this is your Environmental Minute.